Welcome to the engine room. Back to it. Back Another at project. it. We're doing uh, today. We're doing a Banks Monster Ram <laughs> on Dean's 2018 Cummins 3500. So this gets rid of the grid heater, replaces it with this heating plug that goes into the top of the new Ram. Uh, the new air horn, new fuel lines, new plenum, hardware, hardware, <laughs> but nuts and bolts. Yeah, it's pretty good kit. Very complete kit from Banks. Yeah. Already pulled the EGR off. So we're gonna get into this now. I'm gonna pull everything, pull everything out, take the fuel rail out, pull the wires off, replace all this, clean it, put it all back together again. All right, where we at? Well, I gotta take off this uh, silicone boot off the boost tube. Pull the boost tube off. Right at the intake. Take this. Already off. pulled the EGR and yep. EGR valve. Pulled off the wire to the original stud for the grid heater right so following the thoroughbred diesel video really in depth step by step he does a really great job this is the second one that we're doing so let's pull, sucker off. pull this horn off and see what kind of conditions we got underneath check this out what do you got? We got the uh, Banks intercooler pipes. And and boots. And boots. This should slide off really nice because I just did it like three months ago. Very nice. Let's see. Still got lithium so grease on. Trying to condition this thing so <sighs> careful. Wow. Okay, that's not great. No. But that's clean. 47,000 miles. Wow. I guess there's something too. Just uh, I don't really take it for short drives. I take it, you know, long trips, New Hampshire, all over the place. 300 plus mile trips, towing. Not bad. They say to do that. It keeps everything hot and clean. And I do run additives pretty frequently. Every other tank. So what do you do around town? You don't drive? No, not this. Only a highway. Yeah, only highway. Only highway yeah. mileage. All right, cool. You keep keep going. All right, pulling the fuel lines off. We got the first two off. Nice yeah. caps. Banks kit comes with the caps, which is awesome. So pulling these fuel lines, 19 millimeter. They're a little tough. Dean's struggling a little bit, right, you know Dean? What? Yeah, but I'm going to double wrench it. Yeah, you're gonna double wrench that one. Double wrench. Right, cool. So that's pulling the fuel lines. Then we're gonna pull this rail out and get to the intake plenum cover. So that'll be next on the list. But coming along, not too bad so far. Just biggest thing is pulling, pulling off all the electrical connections, these breathers. And you just gotta be gentle with the uh, injection oh, control. Fucking right. Damn, what do you got there? Uh, is that a. Uh, is that a this uh, is a, is that a automotive. Like carpentry tool. Is that an automotive nail puller? It is now. What are we doing? I'm trying to pry against the head. Oh, yeah, that's, that thing. that's bound to break something. Yeah, that's not great. Yeah, Maybe we shouldn't that. try that. that. That needs to stop. Yeah. You get the carpentry tools away from yeah, that's not the diesel ideal. <laughs> operation that's going on here. The modified I don't like wrench. This. You don't like this one? No. It, why? It works perfect. No. So we clearance this one. It's a 19. Oh, so we're going to try the V groove. V groove. All right. I'll hold the light. How's that? Yeah, that's good. That's nice, but where's that hammer? That's what we need more hammer. Yeah, get it in with the hammer. Here you that's go. what we need more hammer. Here, I'll give you the small one. Yeah, that's good. There you go. Just a break it. Give it a little tap, tap. Just, just a love tap. That was enough. That was. You see that? Uh, finesse. Look at that. That's, see, that's the automotive hammer. If you used yeah. it before, <laughs> that was the problem. You were using carpentry <laughs> tools before it. All right, so both sides of that is loose. I just got to get the other one looser. Let's get that. You don't have to get it all the way off, that one. Oh, the last last? No. So oh. all you got to do is just get it loose, take mm -hmm. it off the fuel rail, and roll it up. That one. Let's try. A modified wrench. Modified 19 mil? Modified 19. Get that in there. And get it. Just get the one that goes the injector line just loose enough. So we can pivot. And easy. It's just that easy. So I just have to do it. From here, it's way easier. Oh, I. Where I stand. Yeah. I'm not hunched over in the engine bay. Right. For a little yeah. while. You know what the problem is? What's the problem? It's not me. Manufacturer's it's, fault. Yeah, that's. Yeah, exactly this is definitely this. a manufacturer's defect. Defect. They should have made it easier. Yeah. To, actually, they should have made it so that way the grid heater didn't fail, and it had a bigger intake, and you wouldn't have to do this. Now that's. Too but much that's sense. asking for too yeah. much. We need to Gail Banks to get in here and uh, modify the situation. Loosen it. So all you gotta do, now that that's loose, that last injector connector, now you can just 
disconnect and roll. Like that? Yeah, just roll it up out of the way. There it is. Take it off completely. So now I'll get you the other covers. Yeah. And grab them. Yeah. We got these beautiful little covers that the kit comes with. Here you go. One. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Almost dropped it. Two. It's all good. Here's the light. So cover that up. Now, don't try to pull off the fuel pressure sensor while the rail is in place. So what we're going to do is next one, we're going to pull those lines, the banjo connection, mm -hmm. those return and supply to the fuel rail off, then unbolt the fuel rail completely, and then we can actually move it forward about an inch, inch and a half, and it'll be loose. And now you can reach back okay. there. It's a lot easier to get that sensor disconnected. Let's do it. So we'll do that next. Let's take all right. We got the fuel rail out, got all these plugs out, just pulled all these bolts. I'm going to lift this plenum cover off or I guess intake cover. I'm going to try to peel up yeah, on it. Just got to oh, oh, okay. hey, that's, awesome. that's doing it. I'm trying not to drop anything in there either. We got this back here. That'll be preferred. Yeah, you don't want any, you don't want any sand in your... Uh, well, maybe not today at least. Yeah. As I dump all the sand. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Wonderful. All right, well, that's that. Not too bad. How are we doing there? Actually, it doesn't look bad at all. Not bad. Okay. All right, we got this whole uh, intake plenum off. We just want to give it a quick vacuum. But the truck is parked here, and I got a pile of concrete, and the shop vac is behind the concrete. And you can't start the truck because there's no fuel rail anymore. There we so, go. That's it. Even better. Battery powered. Set. That vacuum sucks. That it does. Look at that. We're all cleaned up. Gave us a quick vacuum out. Cleaned off the old gasket. We got the new gasket going on. This goes in with where it has the bank's logo. It goes up and towards the front. So that's going to go in. And now we can actually put the plenum in. All right. There you go, sir. Thank you. You do under. Under? Well, over. But over? Um, under, but over. All right, cool. Let me get you some bolts and we'll oh, there it is. get that, get her going. Got the fuel rail in. What's that, a torque wrench? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we can do we this the right way. We ain't we doing no good dogas. All right, cool. Fuel rail's in. So we got to do all these other ones without the pedestals first, right? It doesn't make a difference. No. I okay. would just kind of do it in a semi-star pattern, so I'd cross back and forth. Yeah, I probably should. But I, that's how I'd do it. Yeah, I wouldn't. So fuel rail, uh, banjo fitting for the return is back connected. Uh, fuel supply from the CP3 is connected. Uh, Fuel pressure sensor is, is 18 foot connected. Pounds? Yes, that's 18. Hey. Oh, there you go. Click, there click. But, do you uh, think the um, that wobble that extension would work for that? Yeah, we can do this? that. We'll yeah. get in there with a wobble. Either that or my something with a little bit of uh, give because the head of this is hitting against the head of the motor. Yeah, got it. We'll do. All right, fuel rail's in. All torqued down. Back fuel line is there. She's in. All tight. Because you can actually see the Sharpie mark that I put on it before. Oh, so you brought it right back to where it needed to be? Yeah. Hmm. That's pretty slick. Yeah. Slick and slack. Like no, but we did. Yeah. All right, cool. Fuel lines. Okay. What do we got there? Pull out this last cap. That last cap for that very front fuel line, new fuel line. Okay. There's that new one. This Everything is else is on. We're ready to go. They're all torqued down. So that's the one that comes with the Banks kit. Yeah. There's only one way it goes, so... You really can't mess it up. You want to bet? Yeah, you could probably mess it up. You could probably mess it up. And that's that. I'm going to tighten all that down and start putting some of this electrical work back on. It's really good quality uh, fuel on, i got to say. Yeah. OE quality, that's what they say. Gail knows what he's doing. Yep, Gail Banks has it figured Sorry. out. Very nice. Very nice. Shiny parts. All right. All fuel lines are on. Got to rag stuff down in there so we don't drop anything. But everything is tight. Fuel pressure regular, uh, fuel pressure sensors connected. Put that on before we put the rail back. 
All this is torqued down. What is this? 17? 18 foot pounds. 18. 18 yeah. foot pounds yep. on all those. Put a little drop of Loctite on all of them. Yep. So next step is to just put the all the electrical back in, all the, all the electrical connections, reconnect everything, get the insulator back on top, and then once all that stuff's together, we can put this intake horn on. Right, how's that gasket treating it? Oh God, it's fighting me every bit of the way. Fighting every step of the way. Yeah. So that is the throttle body, I guess. What do they call it? Um, no, it is called the throttle valve. Throttle valve. Yeah. That'll do it. Yeah. So very stuck onto the intake horn. So we had to knock it off with a two by four and a pump hammer, but it went, it's off. So just moving everything over. Pull the intake temperature sensor off that's on. Plugged up the holes on the new monster ram. And yeah, just getting ready, prepping everything. I'm gonna put that intake valve back on with a fresh gasket. And then this will be ready to go in. All right, got this thing all set up, ready to go back on. Yep. So she's gonna go back on now. Where's the gasket? Gasket's down. Gasket's on there. It's got a little label front. We're good to go. Yeah. All right, put that thing in. Put it in. So to put the bolts down inside the inside the horn itself, the one that goes inside here, down in there. The one that goes down in there, you don't want to lose. So if you take a wrap, wrap of electrical tape on the hex key and then one wrap on the tip, here, put that bolt on there, let's see. You can force it on. Nice and snug. Nice and snug. And it makes it so it doesn't fall. How do you feel about that? That's nice and snug. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that's, yeah good. that's good. That's good. All right, cool. Put that one down in there. And in the grid heater hole. Help if I put the wrench to tighten. No, that's the one that goes over there, but we did it with the grid heater hole already. Yeah. Beautiful. Very nice. Cool. All right, this thing's all buttoned up. We got the horn on. Yeah. We're gonna fire this thing up for the first time, right? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick back my 50, so if I can hear. 